Hello and welcome back to the Saints FM series. In the last episode, we went on an unbelievable run. We did get knocked out of the FA Cup by Liverpool. We went on an unbelievable run, winning 10 games in the championship in a row. That puts us currently top of the league with a game in hand over Luton and is looking bloody good for promotion to the Premier League. And for our first game of the day, we travel away to Cardiff, who are promotion hopefuls with a gap of 13 points to 6th and 7th. Now, this is a team, it's basically the A team, except Alcaraz is injured, so Silas slipping in. And Dom Ballard is back from injury, and hopefully we have a striker who can score some goals. Oh, in behind. Chance for Cardiff. Chance for Cardiff. Good block. Boys, wake the fuck up. And that's half time. We've had a lot of possession, but created really nothing with it. You're all shit. Oh, but Dom Ballard, don't look disheartened, mate. Oh, what? What? Oh, oh, oh. No, how have we not scored? That was excellent play. Walker Peters picks it up. Walker Peters, lovely dribbling. And Dozy hits the post. We've hit the post twice in two minutes into the fucking second half. And we draw nil Our uh, winning streak is over because we hit the post twice. It was just a shit performance. We really, we were shit. We just don't have any strikers that can score goals anymore. Every game we play, whether it's full crog, whether it's Mara or Ballard up front, they always drop six point threes. For our second match of the day, we host Sheffield United with former Saints man Bednarak starting. And it's just been a boring game, but just before the half, we did get a penalty just for Adam Armstrong to miss another penalty. But with only 15 minutes left to play, Dominic Ballard, the man, the myth, the legend, stepped up to give us the lead. And that proved to be enough as Sheffield United failed to have a shot even with the majority of possession. So we have the round of 16 uh, conference league draw as the round of 32 just concluded. So we are playing away to the Swiss team, Siverette. I'm feeling pretty confident. And now time for our second home game in a row as we hosted Middlesbrough. And we got off to the perfect start with Doig laying it off for Adozi to slam home. We then made it 2-0 early on in the second half with Adozi scoring a beauty. And unfortunately, we didn't manage to keep a clean sheet as Matt Crooks scored the screamer. But we did manage to get all three points. And after that game, we got bloody two injuries. We've got Doig out for 14 days and Bree out for 13 days. Excellent. And the games keep coming thick and fast as we travel away to Preston. And we got off to a fast start again with Adozi scoring for fun. We then made it 2-0 with Lindstrom playing a beautiful ball over the top with Mara actually staying on side and scoring. We could have made it three, but Mara decided to hit the post. And then we decided to hit the post again. But we did manage to get the third with Mara slotting at home with Adozi playing unbelievably well. We then nearly made it four with Adozi hitting the post again. And late on into the game, we did get our fourth with Saramento scoring from a Jack Stevens cross. But we couldn't keep a clean sheet as Preston scored straight from kickoff. And in the end, it was a comfortable 4-1 victory. And here we are for a big game. UEFA Conference League round of 16 as we play away to Sivaretti. This is a team that's heavily rotated. A little bit of exhaustion, but also because I don't believe these guys are going to be much of a challenge. I'm about to lose 5-0 just because I said that. But this is the team. Zagadou and Stevens are playing center half. Smallbone and Charles. Charles coming back from injury, so giving some game time. Adam Armstrong's in. Saramento's in. And Super Siku has to stay. He scored two. Could have got more, but he scored two. So hopefully he can fucking kick on. There he is with the ball in. Adam Armstrong! And he's offside. No, he isn't. Adam Armstrong strikes, and it's a perfect start for the Saints. Lovely ball. Super Siku. Super Siku! No, it's off the crossbar. He's kind of unlucky, to be fair. There he is. Sila. Penalty! Penalty! Come on. I also changed the penalty kick taker because fucking Adam Armstrong kept missing. Penalty's awarded. Confirmed. So Sila's going to take. Full Krog has the best pens, but obviously he doesn't play much because he's fucking injury prone. Come on, Sila. Come on, Sila! Adam Armstrong, you see him that? That's how you take a penalty. Come on, 2 0. All over the top. No, no. Yes. What a miss. What a miss. Half time, 2 0. Hoping to make it 3 or 4, and then the second legs. There's nothing in it. Oh, Charles, bro. Oh, no. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Bazuni, we need you. Fuck's sake, Shay Charles, you stupid cunt. Fuck's sake, man. Poor second half costs us the bloody cruisy word I wanted. 2 1. Now we can't just rotate heavily in second leg. Fuck you. After winning our round of 16 first leg, we travel away to Coventry. We dominated the opening proceedings with Mara hitting the crossbar. And not so long after, Mara got played through and missed the whole goal. But the big moment came in the last three minutes of the game with Adozi stepping up to give us the lead. He is in incredible form. And Falkrog sealed the victory with this tap-in, giving us all three points.
So we have broken the record for the highest number of points for Southampton in a season as we hit 95 points for the season. We still have seven games left. The current record is 108 points, which was made by Norwich last season. To beat that, we'd need 14 points in the last seven games of the season, which means we need to win basically five of the last seven and then draw two. And now we have our second leg against Severetti. We lead 2-1. This is the team. Uh, Zagadou comes in. Doig is back from injury. He's in. Smallbones in. Adam Armstrong, Saramento, and Fulkrog is going to get a start after scoring in the last game. Dollar with the ball in. Fulkrog! Yes, son. He scores within five minutes. I mean, he's finally fully fit. He's got no problems of injury or match sharpness. Maybe he can cook a bit. Saramento picks it up, it's Sila, it's in, it's two. And that's basically the tie done. Good fucking luck coming back from that, you pussies. Go back to Switzerland. And that's half time, and it is a cruisy journey for the Saints into the next round. Saramento beats his man. Saramento still going. Saramento still going. It's a penalty, Mr. Efferty. And it's gonna be Falkrog, Falkrug, however the fuck you say it. Bang! He slotted in! And he gets a brace. And that's full time, and we cruise into the quarterfinals of the Conference League. All right, we have our youth intake, and really, we've only got one, and he's a Greek lad, a striker. He's got good determination, which gets me confident. He's got good pace. I mean, he's not too bad. We'll see how he goes. His potential seems pretty decent, so I'm happy. In terms of the other players, they seem pretty fucking average, to be honest. I don't think these guys will be ever making it in the Premier League, because that's where we're going to be, baby. Yeah, that was a shit intake. Next up in the championship, we are hosting Ruben Sellers' Reading. Reading nearly took the lead with this effort coming off the bar. But not long after that, Fulkrog plays Sila through one-on-one -on -one and he slots it home to give us the lead. And then we make it 2-0 just before the half of Larios playing it across and Lindstrom tapping it in. And we made it 3-0 with Lindstrom tapping it in to get a brace and Larios getting two assists. And that was a comfortable 3-0 victory. All right, we have the quarterfinal draw for the UEFA Conference League. All right, first game is Getafe versus Maccabi. Yeah, yeah. And the second match is Rems versus a Portuguese side. This is who we want. This is who we want. Adana versus... Fuck, we got Hoffenheim. Oh, that's like the worst team to get in that. The only two teams I was sort of like all about were Getafe and Hoffenheim. And of course we get one of them. Our Lux in the draws have been shit this year. And we get Hoffenheim. That's not easy. And next up in the championship, we travelled away to Nathan Jones's Lincoln City. And we took an early lead with Fulkrog scoring this beautiful header. And just before the half, we made it 2-0 with Mariba scoring this beauty. We then nearly made it 3-0 with Mara hitting the post as usual. But eventually, we did make it free with Armstrong scoring a deflected effort. And we left Nathan Jones with yet another loss. And our next match saw us host Plymouth Argyle. We nearly took an early lead, but Balakocet was flagged for offside. But we did get the breakthrough only 10 minutes later as Lindstrom's effort was deflected in. And then we made it 2-0 with Fulkrog scoring again. We made it 3-0 just for the half of Fulkrog on full-on roids. And Fulkrog did manage to get his hat-trick as we cruised to a 4-0 victory. All right, massive game to end the episode. We host Hoffenheim in the first leg. The goal is to go out there, attack the shit out of them, score five, and then the second league will be cruisy. We've got a perfect A team. Volkrog has been an unbelievable form recently. Hopefully he can continue it. I am very, when we get promoted, I am very tempted to sign him on a permanent. I can get him for like five mil, five to 10 mil. And I'm very tempted because he gives us something different as a target forward and he's scoring for fun from set pieces, which we tend to be very good at. So next season, I'm hoping to sign him. But for right now, we're going to focus on the bloody Germans. Tyler. Doig! Oh, Doig! Doig, we can't... You can miss those in the championship because it's a piece of piss and we've basically already won the league. But come on, mate. This is European football. Half an eye, no. Oh, my God. They lose to a screamer. Halftime, nil all. It's not been a good performance. We've had, like, 80% possession, but we've created nothing with it. Nice, nice. Good ball, Mara. Go. Yes, overlap. Overlap, Adam Armstrong. Overlap. Play the overlap. Yes. Mara, why are you offside? Why are you standing there? God, Mara, you're annoying. Fuck, stop just standing offside, for God's sake. And it's full time. Anticlimactic into the fucking... Hip oh, it's not full time. It's out. Please. Alcaraz, please. Actually, please. Alcaraz. No. Oh, my God. This game's been bullshit. Man. These guys came here and didn't even bother to play football. 28% position. They did fucking nothing all game. They just parked their box, bro. 
Bunch of losers, man. Oh, that's such a bad result. That is such a bad result. Considering how much we dominated with the ball, especially. We did create a few chances. Mar is fucking off offside for no reason. Oh, we have to win that. At least get an advantage. Now we're going away from home in the next league. And they'll try and actually play football. No doubt we'll fucking lose. I can tell you right now. I'm pissed. And that's going to be it for this episode. We end the episode sitting top of the league with four games left. We only need four points from our last four games to break... Oh, no, five points from our last four games. Four points to tie, five points to surpass it in our last four games, which really, in reality, we should do. But we do have a seven-point lead with four games left, so we just need, like, one or two more wins, and we've got the title secured. And obviously, we have a big, big game coming up in that second leg of the quarterfinal. Hopefully we can get it done. I mean, I'm pretty confident in terms of winning it because there's not really that many teams left. And luckily for us, our schedule will start to lighten up if we do make the semi-final. So we should have no issue with rotation. But that form is ridiculous. We're unbeaten in 18 championship games with our last five games. Well, our last four games being 2-0, 3-0, 3-0, 4-0. So it's safe to say we've been in great form. But that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you did. And I'll see you boys in the next episode. But we'll find out if we break the points record, if we win the league, and if we can win the conference league.